In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, praise be to God, and blessings and peace be upon the Messenger of God. Hopefully, you benefited from the, the story of Asia. We now talk about the the lady of, of all of the of, of all the the lady of all the women in the world. Uh, who we mean is the Virgin Mary. Her story has many immense benefits has many benefits. She she represents a, a wondrous example a, 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 a great example for all women. سنتكلم عن جوانب في كمالها وماذا يخصنا نحن وماذا نستفيد منها نحن اليوم. We'll talk about some certain aspects of her perfection and how it pertains to us and how we can benefit from it today. حكى الله سبحانه وتعالى تفاصيل حياة مريم بشكل عجيب جدا. God speaks about the very, the very specific details of Miriam's life in a really amazing way. وبداية القصة أن أمها حنا كانت عقيما لا تنجب. And the beginning of it is it starts by recounting that her mother Hana Hana uh, couldn't bear children. وكبر سنها وهي لا تنجب. And she she attained this, she came to a certain age and she still hadn't born any children. فيوم من الأيام رأت and one day she watched a, a bird <coughs> going to its nest to feed its young. And her heart softened at that moment and she said, Oh Lord, just like you've given her, give me a child. And Allah uh, enabled her and gave her a child, let her carry it, but, but she, and she bore a child. And when she knew that she was pregnant, she said, she said some immense words, she said something immense. This is one of the, this is the apex of, of, a, of, an, of, the, honor of, a, of the honorable position a woman could have. قالت ربي إني نذرت لك ما في بطني. She said, "Lord, I've consecrated, I've consecrated what my what I carry in my womb." فنذرت هذا الغلام المول الغلام الذي في بطنها نذرته أن يكون خادما لبيت المقدس لله تعالى. So she consecrated the child that was in her womb to serve God and to serve in the in the holy of holies in the in the in the in the temple of, in, the, in the mosque in Jerusalem or the temple of Jerusalem. She didn't seek anything from God. Oh, from this child, sorry. She didn't want anything else from this child but the service to God. So, so she wanted a child for many years and she longed for a child for all those years. And when she was pregnant with the child, she said, This child's for you, O Lord. This is the power of, of being in a state of uh, rapture and annihilation in God. When someone makes something solely for God, devotes, dedicates it totally for God, God accepts it and, and he brings much, much to it, much from it. لأن الإنسان أحيانا يكون عنده أنانية يريد ولده له أن ينفعه وأن يفيده وأن يحمل اسمه. He says, because sometimes a person is, has a child, but is selfish with that child. They want the child to bring something back to the family, or bring something back for them, or, or to be the carrier of their name and family, family honor and so on. So she said, oh Lord, accept this child from me. قالت ربي إني وضعتها أنثى. And Allah then even describes in detail how how she was when he she gave birth to this child. He said it says, and when she when she gave birth to her, she said, Oh my Lord, I've given birth to a girl. 
فتفاجأت بذلك. So she was surprised at this. ثم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وليس الذكر كالأنثى واختلف المفسرون هل هذا هو قول الله أو هو قولها هي وليس الذكر كالأنثى. And and then then the the verse carries on with and the boy is not the 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 male is not the same as the female and the the commentators have differed. Is that the continuation of what Han- Hannah said when she said, I've given birth to, her, to a girl and the girl is not like the boy, or the boy is not like the girl, or is that God finishing it, saying the boy is not like the girl? And some people use this verse to, to give evidence that boys are preferred over girls or such like, and this verse has nothing to do with this. فذكر المفسر أن أن معنى ذلك أن أن هي نوت أن يكون هذا الغلام لبيت المقدس وكان في ذلك الزمان لا يسمحون للنساء أن يخدمنا في بيت المقدس وإنما ذلك من شؤون الرجال فهي حزنت أنها نوته لبيت المقدس ولكن الآن لن يصلح أن يكون لبيت المقدس. So if we take the, 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 the position where it says that that was her statement, so it was the continuation of I've given birth to a girl and the boy is not like the girl. If it was Hannah's statement, what she was, the commentators who took that position, they say what that means is, she's saying that because I've consecrated this child to the service of the temple, and at the time the, the service of the temple was the domain of the priests. There were no priestesses in the, in the temple. So, it's, so what she's saying is, how can I give her to this service in the temple when she's a woman? And the, the, this is the charge of the priests. The priests are the ones who serve in the temple. والمعنى الجميل الآخر الذي ذكره بعض المفسرين أن هذا هو كلام الله لها وليس الذكر كالأنثى أي ليس الذكر الذي أنت طلبتيه يا مريم كالأنثى الذي أنا أعطيتك إياها فالذي مني هو أفضل من الذي طلبتيه. And the professors who took the second position, which is that God is the one saying, and the boy is not like the girl, they said that the meaning of that is that the boy you hoped for to be a priest in the temple is not like the girl I've given you. And the stature of the girl that I've given you. He's not, he, wasn't, he wouldn't have had the stature the girl I've given you has. Because I've given you a girl that will serve, be better than the men, be better than the men that serve in the temple, and she will give birth to a savior who will save the temple and save the people. ثم بعد ذلك ظهر أثر العناية الأم وكيف ظهر في اصطفاء البنت. And then Allah made manifest the, the, solicitude, the, the solicitude of to the mother and and the, the gifts to this girl, the, 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 the election of this girl. هناك أربع أشياء عملتها حنا هي كانت السبب في أن تكون مريم بهذا المكان. There were four things that Hannah did that pre- pre- paved the way for Mary to be the way she was. الأول أنها نظرتها لله. The first is that she gave her totally and dedicated her, consecrated her to the service of, the, of God. So that was a mother, when she's carrying a child, can also emulate her by, by holding her belly when she's got the child in it. And she says, O oh Lord, this child that I'm bearing, I want it to be of service to your faith. الثاني أنها كانت تدعو الله أن يقبلها. And secondly is that she prayed, pleaded to God to accept this child. فإذا حملت الأم دائما تدعو الله أن يقبل هذا الذي في بطنها فكل يوم تدعو له بالقبول عند الله. And so the mother, when she's carrying a child, it's good for her to ask God daily for the total, the whole time she's pregnant even, that God makes this child acceptable to God. Accepted in the divine presence. And the third thing is that she chose her name well, and she said, "I've named her Mary, Maryam." Maryam معناه هي خادمة الرب أو هي أمة الله سبحانه وتعالى. And Maryam, the name Maryam means uh, the bondswoman of God. 
فجعلت اسمها متوافقا مع ما ما ارادت منها فهي اسم على مسمى so she made the name harmonious with what she sought for this child الناس اليوم عندما ياتي انسان في فيختار لطفله اسم يريد به التشبه باسم فلان وهو من الفساق او من البعيدين عن الله فيؤثر هذا هذه التسميه عليه he said so now, nowadays we see people who when they have a child they give it the name of someone who's well known who might even be someone who's someone who's immoral or corrupt and that child, that name will affect the child ولذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يحب الاسماء الحسنه واذا جاء انسان اسمه سيء يغير اسمه and that's why the Prophet وسلم, loved that people had beautiful names or names that carried beautiful meanings and when someone came to him whose name carried, had a bad or difficult uh, a heavy meaning he would change their names because the name has a, an, uh, an, uh, a big effect on the human being an intense effect on the human being ذكر هذا الأمر ليعلمنا. and that's why God mentions it in my detail of Hannah saying and I have named her Mary. I've named her Maryam. وكان to, to, to show us the importance of even the name you choose. كان سعيد بن المسيب من التابعين الصلحاء يقول إذا رأيتم في أخلاقي شيئا من الشدة فسامحوني فهذا بسبب جدي. He said Sayyid ibn Musayyab who was one of the Imams of the Tabi'een of the successors and one of the righteous ones amongst the successors he'd say to people if you see some harshness in my nature then forgive me for it, overlook it because it's because of my grandfather. Because he said because that's uh, Sayyid ibn Musayyib's grandfather when he came to the Prophet so his grandfather had met the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet asked him for his name he said my name is Hardship <laughs> That's, that was his name Hazm it means hardship in Arabic and also the word sorrow in Arabic comes from that because it's difficult <laughs> so he said my name is Hardship meaning like a hard earth that's difficult to traverse full of obstacles so that was his name and the Prophet said your name is an, no your name is an easy plateau he changed the name to Sahad, which means like a, a, a valley. And he said, no, Messenger of Allah, leave me by my name. And so Sayyid ibn Musayyib used to say, so if you see some harshness in me, it's because of my grandfather. <laughs> ينبغي لنا أن نحسن الاختيار فالأمر الثالث الذي فعلته حنا هو حسن الاختيار للاسم. So the third thing that we have, this is something we have to be observant of, and the third, so the third thing that Hannah did was choose the name well. والرابع أنها عوذتها عوذت حملها ومولودها بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. And the fourth thing she did was that she sought refuge in God. For so refuge for her child in God and in the child's progeny from, from Satan. And that's why the so he said in the Prophet He said he so and the Prophet said he said every child born has has a, some kind of a strike from the shaitan except Mary and her child. He said because the mother when she sought refuge in God, she sought refuge in God for Mary and the child that Mary bears. She said I seek refuge for my child and for the child that the child bears. So he said they were both protected by that one seeking of refuge. ولذلك ينبغي لنا أن نعوذ أولادنا وبناتنا وأحبابنا دائما بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. So therefore it's incumbent on us to always seek refuge for ourselves and our children and and from, from in Allah from from shaitan. وأريد أن أعلمكم التعويذ الذي كان يعوذ به النبي الحسن والحسين. I would like to teach you the the very formula of of uh, seeking refuge that. The Prophet used to use in order to protect
for the protection of Hassan al Hussein, his grandchildren. I want you to write so that you will be able to write it down to learn it and to use it to seek refuge for yourself, to protect yourself and your family. I want you to write it down to learn it and to use it to seek refuge for yourself, to protect yourself and protect your loved ones with it. So he said, "I want you to write them, and you can write them. If there is a person, I want you to write them." So you, he's, he used to say, so write it down, Uridukuma if it's more than one child, or Uriduka if it's one. So I seek refuge, I, I, I put you in the refuge of, so whether it's plural or singular depends because in Arabic it change. Uriduka bi kalimatillahi at tamma. By, I, I'll just wait till people. Uriduka bi kalimatillahi at tamma. من كل شيطان وهامة ومن كل عين لامة. He said so. It's I seek refuge for you. In the ترجمة لهم. I seek refuge in you. In the perfect words of God. From every Satan and from every predatory beast. And from every eye that looks at you. That looks at you without, uh, that looks at you with with blame or reproach. وهناك تعويد آخر نبوي كان النبي يعوض به الصبيان. هذا التعويد الأول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبر أن من عوذ به أطفاله لا تضره أم الصبيان وهو نوع من الشياطين الذي يؤذي الأطفال. And he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said and teach you another one but the Prophet said about this one that whoever seeks refuge for a child in this using this formula the Um al-Subyan which is a certain kind of Satan that harms children will never harm them will not harm them. It's a certain genus of 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 satanic beings who harm children particularly and he said if you if you do this formula they won't harm okay. we'll write it during the break and then you can have it he said another one from the prophet when the sahabi abdullah ibn umar he said 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 there was another formula for protection of children that one of the companions, Abdullah bin Umar, used to do for his children. He used to teach it his children. And those of them that were too young to be taught it, he used to write it and uh, have them carry it on, them per on their person, the little children. It is, I seek, the refuge, I seek refuge in God through His perfected words. From His anger and from His punishment. And from the evil of his servants, and from the insinuations of the devils, or for them to even be present. And this is a so this is a second formula of seeking refuge. وكذلك يمكن أن تعوذ بها لأنها وردت عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he said, this, this, formula, this, this uh, formula for protection, I want you to use it and to do it for your children because it's something that's related from the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, from the mother of Moses, what did we learn about <coughs> of how to be with the child? He said, the lessons from the mother of Moses going back to the first one now. What do you remember? Yes, sir. Did you forget already? And it is that we, we deposit them in God's care. That's from Moses' mother. And now we've learned that we should seek refuge for them from Satan, Satan the accursed. حنا لما قالت أعيدها بك وذريتها التعويذ هذا جرى إلى البنت وحتى إلى من تولدهم هذه البنت بعد ذلك شوفوا قوة التعويذ كيف يحصل. 
And he said, so this seeking of refuge by Hannah was for the child she was bearing and for the progeny of that child. So just look at how, by seeking God's refuge in something, look at how powerful that was. It affected the child and the child's children. فإذا أربعة أشياء عملتها حنا الأول أنها أنها نذرت ما في بطنها. And he said so four things that Hannah did. First was that she she consecrated what was in hers, what she was the child she was bearing. ثانيا قالت فتقبل مني يعني ربي اقبل مني هذه النية وهذا المولود. And then she asked God to accept it from her, meaning accept this intention of mine that this child be devoted to your service and accept this child in the devotion to your service. Thirdly, she chose, she chose a good name for her. Fourthly, she, she put her under God's protection. This is in verse, from verse 35 in the chapter of Ali Imran, which is to do with the family of Mary. فماذا فعل الله سبحانه وتعالى معها؟ So what was it that God did to her after this? قال فتقبلها ربها. So God says in the Quran, so her Lord accepted her. هي طلبت القبول لكن الله تعالى قال فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن يعني قبول فوق الذي طلبتيه يا حنا. And he said, so God says, and God accepted her with an acceptance that was benevolent. That excelled, so meaning even more than she even imagined. Allah accepted her in ways even more than the mother imagined. And Allah and then God says, and He cultivated her well, He nurtured her well. That's why this Maryam was, was someone who was blemishless in both her body, she was physically blemishless. And in her character, morally she was blemishless. So she was like the the she was like the the example the exemplar of, of female of of uh, she's, she's like the most beautiful exemplar of womanhood. So because no women were more beautiful than her. And Allah, because Allah Himself says, and He 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 nurtured her well. And she wasn't even stricken by the maladies and illnesses that most stricken go, most children go through as they're growing up. ثم سخر الله رسولا من الرسل أن يتولى تربيتها. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala facilitated that that one of His messengers, one of His messengers, be her nurturer, her mentor. She was mentored by a messenger of God. It was our master Zachariah. Allah said, God says, he, he, he put her in the charge of Zachariah. And then Allah, he, he, he facilitated for her to get her sustenance with ease. فكان زكريا إذا دخل عليها غرفتها المغلقة المحراب يجد عندها فاكهة الصيف في الشتاء فاكهة الشتاء في الصيف. So when Zakaria used to come in to see her when she because she was in a in a in a she had her own devotional chambers and when Zakaria used to go in to to check on her he'd find her with summer fruits and summer foods in the winter and winter foods in the summer. وهي طفلة صغيرة فيقول من أين لك هذا تقول هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب. And she was still a small child, so he'd say to her, where did you get this from? And she was, even though she was a small child, she said, it's from God, and God gives it without recompense, without, with, in ways that are innumerable. So she, she attained the perfection of faith, even before she attained to the age of adolescence. The angels used to come to her when she was still a child. And that was by the blessing of her mother. Because the mother did four things for her daughter and Allah gave her four things from himself. Allah accepted her with a, an excelled, in, in an excellent man, in an, with an excellent acceptance. And Allah nurtured her, cultivated her well, meaning that He made her, that's why, blemishless inwardly and outwardly. 
Thirdly, he facilitated that someone be there to nurture her to be her spiritual mentor, which was one of the messengers of God themselves. Fourthly, he took charge of her sustenance by himself without any means. The causal chain was broken, so there was no causal chain. And likewise, if we do that, that's what will happen. And that's why if you have a good intention for that child to be devoted to God, God will bring about someone who will actually be their mentor. Even if it's after a long time. You might make the intention for that child while it's, in your, while it's still in the womb. And nothing, you won't see any of that for a while. You might even see them go astray for a while. But that intention will come back and get it, take, take him by the hand even if it's after a time. And Allah will facilitate for him that one of the righteous people will come along and take him by the hand and nurture him and cultivate that child. And when, when the day of judgment comes and the people will, and one will ask why, why did that person attain that, that rank? It will be because of the intention of the mother. So Mary grew up in that state because of her mother. وتعرضت مريم في هذا إلى كثير من الامتحان بسبب الحسد. And Mary was tested, had many tests because of people's envy to her or towards her. وكان قد اشتهر أمرها كثيرا بين الناس. She she became famous amongst people. وهنا أريد أن أذكر لكم الآن نماذج الكمال في مريم. And now I want to tell you the 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 the, the, the perfect some of the facets of perfection in Mary. تعرفون المرأة الجميلة التي تكون فائقة الجمال غالبا ما يدخل عليها التعالي والتكبر. He says, you know, sometimes when a woman is physically very attractive, that can be a reason why she starts feeling above other people. She starts feeling arrogant and full of herself. إلا أن أجمل امرأة في العالم كانت أكثر النساء في العالم تواضعا وتذللا. But the most beautiful woman in the world, in history, throughout history, was, was, was the most intense in being humble and, and being contrite in God's presence. So she was never delusional because of her beauty. And so if any woman out there in the world feels that she's something and full of herself because she's beautiful, if we were to say to her, if we put you before, next to Maryam and compared you, you'd cut you, you wouldn't look very nice. So this most beautiful, this most beautiful woman, woman would actually, she, with all of that, she would sit with the poor people. And she would give them money and arms and charity. She'd give charity to the poor and she would sit humbly amongst the poor. Now, we've, now we, because now we're looking at these perfections in these most perfect women. Because Allah wanted to show us, died to show us the apex of how beauty is expressed itself when. when, when Coupled with perfection in women. And, and a lot of times when a woman is beautiful, she actually capitalizes on that beauty for, for her own ends. He said we see a lot of beautiful women who, as soon as they have the chance, they go towards um, the media and having a celebrity state. Oh, no, so they use their, their beauty for this to, to get fame and celebrity. But Mary, although she was not beautiful, she was also intensely chaste. 
the law even said it to us in a very explicit way. He says, and Mary, the daughter of Imran, who protected her privates. You know, what, what, what accusation could you level, level at a woman that would make her feel slighted and demeaned inside? If you say to her she's a thief or this or that, what, what was the worst thing you could say to a woman about herself? The worst, the worst thing you can level at a woman is to accuse her in, her in, things, in something to do with her honor. So when she's an honorable woman, she's an honorable woman and she's ch ch chast and she's pure and you, you go and accuse her in something to do with that, with her purity and chastity. So Mary was tested with the, with the biggest test that a woman like that could be tested with. She was, she was carrying a, she was pregnant with a child without having a husband. And that was that left her wide, left her open for anyone who envied her or had a, had a grudge with her to accuse her of being a, an adulteress. هي عفيفة جدا جدا جدا. She, is, she was very, very chast. And in spite of this, she was test, she, uh, the test came and people leveled in accusations at her chastity. But she didn't, she didn't rebel against God. And God Signals, singles her out by having a whole chapter of the Quran named after her. And Allah mentioned, God mentions her story in minute detail, specific, in specifics. So that uh, young women and, and w women and young women can learn from her. ما تنظرين إلى مريم الجميلة العفيفة التي حصن حصنت نفسها وقف وأختبرتها في شرفها وصبرت. So as if you know, so as if you're hearing, so as if God is saying to them, how can you, how can you, how can you not be like this when you see that this woman who was beautiful and chaste and devout was even tested in this with the in something to do with her honor. الله تعالى قال فيها واذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ انتبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا ابتعدت عنهم قليلا. God says in the Quran and mentioned in the book Mary who who took for, who left her folk and went to folk folk and and went to a place in the east. لأنها ضاقت من كثرة ما يؤذيها الناس. So he says, I mentioned in the book Mary who left her people and went to a place in the east because she felt constricted at what they were saying about her and So she veiled herself from them, she 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 went into seclusion from them. And then it says and our angel took a human, or it took a form in front of her. Our angel, uh, Gabriel, took a form in front of her. Took, took a physical form in front of her. قالت إني أعود بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا أنا أعود بالله منك لا أريد أن أقع في شيء من الحرام هي عفيفة. So she said when she saw the angel take on a corporal form, she says, I seek refuge in the and God from you, if you be God conscious, meaning I don't want to be in this place and, f and fall into something. He said, I am an angel of God to you to give you a child, to give you a child as a gift from God. 
And she said, how can I carry a child when I'm not a married woman, when I'm not... And he said, uh, this is how, this is what, what God says, meaning this is, this is God's command, and so be it. سلمت لأمر الله فحملته فانتبذت به مكان قصية حملته ثم بعدت عن الناس. so she 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 surrendered herself to God's will. she bought she carried the child and she went to a place far away from her people to give birth to him. فجاءتها ساعة الولادة وهي وحيدة فريدة تحت جدع نخلة. So the labor pains came on her when she was on her own in the wandering in the wilderness and she 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 she, she fell upon a palm tree so she sat under the palm tree Hala sa'aba jiddan jiddan very difficult situation very Ay very difficult situation she's on her own and she's ayyu mara'atin tu'ani alaman fil wilada fal tatadhakkar maryam madha kanat tu'ani any woman who's suffering pain, labor pains, let her remember what Mary was suffering from. Whatever you suffer from, it will be less than her. So she, there, there again you have a perfect, uh, a perfect example, a perfect expression of, of uh, patience and surrender to God's will. يمكن بعض أخواتنا إذا لم تلد في مستشفى جيد جميل جدا يضيق صدوها لماذا أست أولد في هذا المستشفى الصغير؟ He said maybe some of our sisters when they if they were to give birth to the hospital other than the one they planned such as you know they planned a big hospital with a good maternity ward and they end up somewhere else maybe they even feel upset why why did I give birth in this hospital؟ عليها تتذكر السرير الذي ولدت عليه مريم. She has to remember the, the, the labor bed that Mary gave birth on. It was clay. And her back was leaning on, a, on, the, on the trunk of a palm tree. She didn't have a doctor, nor did she have a wet nurse. Uh, did, 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 yeah, did nor did she have a doula or wet nurse to be there with her. So she, she gave birth by herself and she carried the child by herself. And she was hungry and she was thirsty. And Allah inspired her to shake the palm trunk. And the, the, the ripe fruit of it fell from the tree. And Allah made the spring well up from under her. So she ate and she drank. But this, this, this great miracle, saintly miracle, only manifested after a great test and tribulation. Many of us want all these saintly miracles to just come to us from Allah's presence. From God's presence. These things came only after much patience and, much, and surrender to God's will. وهي كانت مستعدة أن تصبر حتى لو لم تحصل لها هذه الكرامة هي ستكون راضية كذلك. and her she would have been patient even if this saintly miracle hadn't come. ثم جاءت أمام التحدي العظيم جدا. and then she came back to find herself in front of this huge challenge that was there before. أمر الله تعالى أن لا تفر بولدها بل تأخذ ولدها فتعود إلى بيت المقدس. God commanded her not to run away, flee with her child. He commanded her to go back to Jerusalem with the child. Very difficult situation. She could have taken the child, fled and left the country so to someone no one knows anything about her. So she, she was commanded by God to go back to Jerusalem and she came back carrying this child. And people gathered to, gathered around her. This this uh, gathered around her and started cursing her and putting her down and swearing at her. And God commanded her not to, to not even to say anything. And people gathered around her and said to her, "Your father wasn't an immoral man. Your mother wasn't an immoral woman." 
you've come from a good family and you've spoiled the family's reputation. You've come from, you've, your ancestors were good people and you've spoiled all of their reputations. I said we'll carry on talking even though the Adhan is going because so we can make use of the time properly. So each one of you repeat the Adhan in herself what she's what we're talking. فصاروا يسألونها ويشتمونها ويعاتبونها كيف لوثت هذه الأسرة لأن أسرتها كانت أسرة صالحة وأسرة نبوة. So they started to disparage her and blame her and saying to her, how can you bring such, how could you taint your family name because she was from a family, her, her ancestors were prophets, her family was known for prophets. So she pointed at the child. And they said to her, what's this, you want us to now talk to a child in the cradle? فجاءت لحظة النصرة الربانية لمريم. At that moment, God's victory came to Maryam. She, she had got, she, was, there was a display of God's victory to Maryam. فتكلم سيدنا عيسى وهو طفل في المهد. And so Jesus spoke while he was a child in the cradle. قال إني عبد الله. He said, I am the slave of God. آتاني الكتاب. He gave me the book. وجعلني نبيا. And he made me a prophet. And he, and he made me blessed wherever I be. And he comes, he joined upon me to pray and to give charity for as long as I live. And to be, to have piety to my mother. Nor did he make me a tyrant and a wretch. So he spoke in the cradle, he mentioned his mother and he mentioned his foul piety towards her. And Mary was the exemplar, the sublime exemplar and archetype of how a woman bears with patience when she is actually, when the worst accusation is leveled at her, an accusation pertaining to her honor. Some ladies sometimes when they uh, find it difficult to get marriage, mar married and stay without a husband and have no relations, some of them feel that they they need to have that outlet, so they'll go to something haram, and then they'll say the, the justification being that, what do you want me to do? I haven't got a man. I'm not married. Let her remember Mary and what Mary went through. Perchance she might be Mary's, in Mary's vicinity in the garden. We also, and we also mentioned for you Mary, how Mary exemplified a beautiful woman being chaste. Chast. So she, she protected, she didn't let her beauty become something that was misused. And how she didn't allow her beauty to make her feel arrogant or better than people. وهناك دروس كثيرة في حياة سيدتنا مريم يمكن إن شاء الله تعالى أن نتكلم عنها في وقت آخر. There are many lessons from the life of Mary that we can speak about on another occasion, إن شاء الله.